of human bondage. What is it about? Stability, unstability, choices, confusion. We'll come to know in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. Today's novel of discussion under British literature is Of Human Bondage, written by William Somerset Maugham. William Somerset Maugham was a British writer who lived from 1874 to 1965. He published this novel of human bondage in the year 1915. It is a building's Roman, which means it talks about the growing years of the protagonist. So who is the protagonist of human bondage? It is a person, a boy named Philip Carey. The literary period of this novel is modernism, and the setting is late 19th and early 20th century in London, England, then a place in Germany, then there will be Paris in France, okay? All these are going to be different locations, right? Let's begin. Philip Carey's childhood. Look at this little boy on the screen. Philip Carey is a nine-year-old boy born with a physical deformity. What physical deformity? He has a club foot. Club foot is like inverted foot. I will show you a photograph soon. After the death of his father, his dear mother named Helen Carey also passes away. Oh, he's just nine and he's an orphan now. So a shy, sad, alienated, aloof orphan, that is Philip, is taken in by his paternal uncle and aunt who live in a rural village of Blackstable, England. The names of his uncle and aunt are Philip's uncle is called William Carey, who works as a minister. And he's a very distant and a cold personality who treats Philip very strictly. Whereas his aunt's name is Louisa Carey, who is a kind woman who wants to give a very comfortable abode to this orphan child, to Philip. Okay, so Louisa acts like a mother, but William does not act like a father. Whatever, William def sorry, Philip definitely feels aloof, feels sad, he misses his mother. Okay, this is Philip's growing like childhood age. Now, with this, let's come to Philip Carey's schooling. Less than a year later of his, you know, adoption, Philip's uncle sends him away to study at a boarding school. At boarding school, because of his club foot, see, I have shown you the photograph here, because of his club foot, everybody teases him at school. Nobody talks to him. He wants, you know, to make friends. He wants to have that connection, but he can't. Even if somebody is you know, good to him, he feels, oh God, how am I treated so nicely? I can't be. Okay. Now, for example, at school, Philip makes a good friend called Rose, but their friendship does not continue for long because it is Philip only who alienates himself. Did you understand? Here, the theme is inferiority and aloofness. And do you find a change in my <laughs> voice today? I'm suffering from severe cold. It's quite cold here. Okay. Okay, whatever. Let's move on. Give me just one second, okay? So, because he has no friends at the boarding school, Philip makes books his friends. He finds comfort and love within books and education. And that is how he actually grows up to be an educated boy. Since Philip is excellent at studies, Philip's uncle feels plans that they should send him to Oxford on a scholarship where he should study to become a minister like his uncle. But Philip does not want to become a minister right now. He wants to go to Germany instead. Although, you know, uh, both uncle and aunt, they do not agree to it. But then he insists that please let me go to Germany for some time. And he does. So the setting changes from England to Heidelberg, Germany. Look here. Philip spends some time in Germany. At, you know, this place, he makes friends. Yes, unlike England, he makes friends in Germany. People think that he's a gentleman. He gets in touch with bohemian lifestyle. He gets intellectual feeling here. He also makes a lifelong friend named Hayward here. But after this, he has to return to England. Back to England, Philip starts training to become a 
chartered accountant yes a ca but just after you know working for one year training for one year he starts hating this profession of a chartered accountant so what does he do he now plans to go to paris because he shifts his focus to art well, how is it possible i'll tell you while he was working as a chartered accountant he actually took a trip you know to paris and he, you know in paris he saw that art culture that importance given to art and he thought that even he wants to be an artist so because he could not become a chartered accountant he now tells his uncle and aunt that i want to go to paris and study art oh god his you know relatives they are angry so william uncle says no you can't but because louisa auntie loves him she actually pays for his trip to paris and that's how he goes to paris to study art here the setting of the novel changes from england to france setting paris here he's going to meet fanny price philip carey meets fanny price let's listen about fanny price philip meets an art student here named fanny price fanny comes from a very poor family she is not very good at art but she is determined that she will move forward in the field of art and as time progresses fanny starts loving philip but but philip does not love her the romantic feelings are not reciprocated equally eventually fanny commits suicide not because you know philip rejected her or something she was getting poorer and poorer day by day she could not even manage her daily expenses and she could not take it any more so fanny commits suicide here the theme is dangers of poverty and after fanny commits suicide oh god philip also starts getting scared for his stability he feels that will art sustain me will art give me money to sustain myself so he runs away to england actually his aunt also passes away okay his loving aunt is no more he moves back to england decides to stay there permanently and now he decides to become a doctor <laughs> enters medical training can you imagine here the theme is different career paths confusion confusion it happens with all of us maybe as a child you want to become an actor when you grow up you want to become a doctor then you say oh no 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 i better be a psychologist blah 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 and where do we end we don't know that's actually what's happening with philip carey here so now he wants to become a doctor <laughs> setting london While training to be a doctor, Philip meets an impoverished waitress whose name is Mildred Rogers. I am going to call Mildred the second most important character of this novel and very easily I can call her the antagonist, the villain of of human bondage. How you'll come to know. Look. Mildred's appearance. She's very pale and thin. Coat her thin lips were pale and her skin was delicate of a faint green color but despite all this philip instantly falls in love with her here it is mildred who acts rude she has no interest towards this man called philip no no but you know how uh, philip gets obsessed with this girl she cannot say no so they start dating each other although she does not like him she uses him only for money and comfort let me tell you philip himself does not have too much money but whatever little he has he spends it willingly on mildred and mildred is more than happy she's poor she likes it and you know she's not educated she comes to uh philip only when she needs uh him emotionally only when she needs him financially she does not like him physically or any other connection no she does not like it tragedy strikes when mildred informs after some time that philip i am going to marry somebody else i was dating someone else i'm going to marry him and philip is devastated philip does not know how to act now mildred is gone So Philip enters into a relationship with Nora Nesbit who is a kind and a sensitive author who Nora Nesbit but he does not love her the way he loved Mildred and few months later Mildred returns 
she's not alone she has a baby in the womb yes mildred is pregnant the person whom she wanted to marry was already married with three children yes that man was cheating on mildred just like how mildred was cheating on philip oh god what you give so shall you get right so listen now what happens here mildred returns she's unwed and she's pregnant she does not know where to go so she of course comes to philip for support philip loves her he leaves nora philip starts supporting her and the coming baby financially here the theme is selfishness you know versus selflessness so mildred is absolutely selfish and philip is absolutely selfless as you can know from here and let me tell you one thing happens here how you know things cross in mind philip has no money okay and he knows that when his uncle will die he will get inheritance he waits for his uncle's death there is a time in the novel when he feels that he should kill his uncle and get all the inheritance oh god young minds baba now let's listen to another story here a new character enters his name is griffiths so something will happen between mildred and griffiths understand griffiths is a fellow medical student and a friend of philip he is extremely smart and presentable and of course philip is very jealous of griffiths mildred reveals her wild cunning nature once again yet again she abandons philip again and she runs away with griffiths imagine griffiths is philip's friend mildred is actually living on philip's mercy both these people cheat on philip and they run away philip is devastated yet again yet again there is a time in the novel when mildred shows her hatred towards philip listen to what she says you bored me stiff and i hated you i would never have let you touch me only for the money she says that you know it was only your money that i wanted i never wanted you but after this again again griffiths after having all the fun with mildred leaves her he says i'm bored of you go now go away from me whereas philips now returns to his career he returns to his medical tra training he tries to become a doctor and a good doctor and in the novel it is shown that he's very good with patients he is not somebody who acts very snobbish he acts like they're equal he talks to them he treats them beautifully okay and here he meets a patient whose name is thorp athelney thorp athelney meet the athelney family as the photograph shows this family is full of love and philip is going to be very very impressed with the athelney family let's listen philip is a good doctor he meets and takes care of a patient at the hospital whose name is thorp athelney thorp has stayed in spain okay thorp has a family basically thorp's history is like this he married a wealthy lady but he was not happy so he left this wealthy lady to marry a housemaid named betty they have children they are not very very rich in fact they are towards the poverty line but they somehow manage and they manage beautifully who the athelney family okay understood so he's a patient at the hospital where philip is working and philip takes care of him that's how philip and thorp athelney come to know each other gradually thorp athelney starts acting like a surrogate father like a papa to philip he guides philip he talks intellectually to philip they have very good conversations and as i told you you know thorp lives lives with his wife betty and their children philip starts enjoying spending time with athelney family he finds them very loving it is here that he understands the meaning of a well knit truly loving family theme is family and stability understood mom actually wants to come mom the author of this novel actually wants to prove a point here that where there is a good family peace will come peace will reside understood easy again the wild woman enters mildred returns yet again how listen after some time philip meets mildred again who has a child 
who is abandoned by so many men in her life that now she hates men, but she has no money. So she has turned to the profession of prostitution. Yes, Mildred has now become a prostitute. Philip comes to know about this. Philip is sad. Nonetheless, Philip ha still has that obsession of, you know, with her. So he invites her and her child that come stay with me. But he does not want to have any more romantic relationship with Mildred. Mildred tries to woo him, but he's not ready to be wooed. Mildred now tries to show love, but he's not ready to take that love. Mildred gets angry. Moreover, Mildred contracts a disease, syphilis, which is a sexually transmitted disease. And after this, Philip pleads with her that please stop this profession of yours. It is giving you diseases. It is making you sick in health. But she says, no, I'm not going to stop this profession. Rather, I'm going to stop being with you. Listen to what Mildred says. Men haven't been so good to me that I need bother my head about them. Oh, Mildred, Philip was so good with you. Come on, don't say that. Whatever, after this, Mildred is gone from the novel. We don't know what happens to her. She becomes an invalid, okay? Let's now come to Philip. He is facing some very strong financial difficulty. How? Listen, Philip invests in stocks quite a lot. But because of the ongoing Boer War, he loses all his money. So much that he becomes penniless. It is again here that Athelney helps him get a job at a shop he also gets a promotion at a shop because of his, you know, creative um, attitude. But he hates being at the shop. After which he leaves the shop. He leaves the job. He does not even have a home for some time. Athelney insists that, come on, Philip, come and stay with me and my family. Okay? And it is at this time that Philip's uncle dies. Philip wanted it, remember? Philip's uncle dies and Philip receives a modest inheritance. And then his financial you know, difficulties, they vanish. He gets this financial stability that he was looking for. And here, a very easy theme is inheritance. How inheritance in life can help somebody get up you know, socially, like financially, right? And after this, Philip feels that, good, I have money. I want to go to Spain now. I don't want to work here in England. But before going to Spain... He takes a small holiday, a short trip with the Athelney family. And it is at this trip that love ho jayega. Philip Carey and Sally Athelney. As you can understand from her surname, Sally Athelney is the daughter of Athelney. Okay. It is on this trip that Philip and Sally get to know each other better. Philip realizes that Sally loves him already. Yes. So, you know, they make love. And Athelney feels that she's pregnant. Philip says, I abandon my wish of going to Spain. I want to be with you. Eventually, Athelney, uh, Sally realizes that she's not pregnant. But Philip says, no matter. I will still not go to Spain. I will abandon, you know, my, you know, wish of traveling. I will be a doctor here in this small village. I will marry you, Sally. And I will now settle for marriage, wife, children, and a happy future. That is what Philip thinks. Understood? So let me read it here. Uh, it is here on this trip that Philip finally falls in love with Athelney daughter Sally. It is a mutual kind of love which culminates into a happy marriage. So the novel ends with the two looking forward to a happy domestic life together. <laughs> Theme stability. And listen to what Philip says at the conclusion of the novel. He says, quote, The simplest pattern, that in which a man was born, worked, married, had children and died, was likewise the most perfect. So Philip says a man is actually born to marry, have children, work and die. This is a perfect lifestyle. <laughs> nice, na? It's a good novel. I liked it. Pretty cool. Few points to ponder. Mom, the author of this novel, says for Of Human Bondage, quote, this is not a novel, not an autobiography. Though much in it is autobiographical, more is pure invention. He's agreeing also it is autobiographical. He's denying also that it is not autobiographical. I'll tell you what are the things which match. 
Mom also was an orphan when he was young. Mom had a physical deformity. He did not have club foot, but he stammered, stammered, okay, in his speech. Mom also went to Germany, to Paris. Mom, want, you know, was a doctor, like he wanted to be a doctor, but then his real interest lied in literature, okay? He came to literature. He also loved art, although he never painted. Listen to the next line. Mom possessed in his private collection works by four painters which are men who are mentioned in this book. The four painters mentioned in this book are Pissarro, Sicily, Monet and Renoir. Pissarro, Sicily, Monet and Renoir. Easy, understood. Ho gaya. With this, we are done. And I want to uh, announce something today. Coming Monday, you know that I do three summaries per week. So coming Monday, I'm going to start with quiz series based on my last week three summaries. I'm going to start this quiz series on Telegram group, on Walat public Telegram group. So if you haven't joined our Telegram group, you better do, okay? This was the announcement. So get ready for the quizzes. Now after one week, after every one week, a quiz based on that week summary will be uploaded on Telegram, Walla Telegram group. Okay. If you want to join, you can tell us. We're going to send you the link. Easy. This is Hina from Team Walla. Take very good care of yourself. Bye bye.